welcome to this liturgical chapel. Um, welcome students and welcome also to those of you who are involved in the Choose APU event this week. Um, this is liturgical chapel. Here at APU in our chapel services, we really value learning and worshiping along with um, a variety of different traditions. And our liturgical chapels, which we hold occasionally, are just one element of that. Um, in these chapels, we focus on the elements of liturgical services, of prayers, of scripture readings, of participating in communion. And we invite you to join us in that experience today. Um, we're in the season of Lent, a period of time leading up to the celebration of Easter, the resurrection. And as we open this time, wherever you are, I invite you to set aside anything that might be distracting, uh, to settle in for this time of worship to the Lord, and to join me in listening to this reading. It's really a kind of a quintessential Lenten reading out of Psalm chapter 51. Hear these words. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I choose this day to be grateful, Lord. I give you praise. With an open heart I'm waking up to heaven I'm waking up to you Waking up to heaven I'm waking up
Now I'm telling you thank you. I'm telling you thank you. According to John. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. 
Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will also be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now in this time for judgment on this world, now the prince of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray as we continue in our worship. Lord, thank you that you are a good God. Thank you that you are enthroned over all. And Lord, in this time, we pray that we would have open minds and hearts to receive from you what you would have for us from your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I need to, as we begin, be give a, uh, offer a little bit of a disclaimer. Um, it, I've come to learn that, that cancer and significant illnesses uh, are as diverse as the people who have them. Uh, the experiences are different, the emotions are different, um, the prognoses are, are different, and, and all are valid. Uh, if I may, I'd like to share just a little bit of my own experience uh, when it comes to one part of journeying with cancer. A uh, little over two years ago, uh, I began to undergo treatment for uh, kind of a rare, fast-growing couple of tumors, uh, malignant in my body. Uh, and I remember being told what to expect in the treatment process. We talked about chemotherapy and radiation and surgery. And, and since then, I've had some other procedures done. And I was told that in, in chemo, which I had first, uh, that there were certain things to expect as side effects from the, the medications. Um, you probably know a lot of them. Nausea, fatigue, lack of appetite, digestive issues, uh, and, and others. Uh, most, if not all, of which I did, in fact, experience. Uh, but I was not told to prepare for another side effect of chemotherapy, uh, which was boredom. Boredom. Uh, for me, chemotherapy was about four and a half months, about six different sessions, of between seven and nine or ten days each, uh, inpatient in a hospital, um, being infused constantly with really bad, toxic things that are meant to kill cancer. Uh, mostly bound to a bed. And I'll be honest with you, there just wasn't much to do. Uh, I was not a big fan. I don't know if you can relate to being stuck in a place for a while that you're really wishing that you didn't have to be. Uh, getting chemotherapy was definitely one of those times for me. Uh, it was a, a grind, a, a one day at a time kind of thing, every day. I will say, I discovered there were a couple of unexpected gifts that came in the middle of the sameness of the day to day. Uh, my wife and, and parents graciously uh, took turns keeping company with me uh, during my time with the infusions. Um, we'd play Uno and watch movies and video games if I was awake for it. Uh, my wife and I also discovered that like the first day or two, the nausea wasn't too bad. And so there was like a cookie place that we'd order cookies from. I have fond memories of these cookies. I, I would very strongly prefer never to have to undergo that experience again of chemotherapy. Um, if you or anyone you know has experienced this kind of thing, you know what I'm talking about. My memories from chemo are mostly bad, but only mostly. Nobody prepared, for, prepared me for how boring chemotherapy was going to be, and no one prepared me either for those little precious gifts of hope 
in the midst of the day to day to day. We're in this season of Lent, a season when we focus on Jesus' life and teachings leading to the cross. I'd like to read again uh, just a, por- a portion of this lectionary reading that we heard out of John chapter 12. This is John 12, starting in verse 23. It says, Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. So the majority of you who are watching right now um, are in college, or maybe you're considering college as part of the Choose APU event. I'm going to ask a question that might sound like an accusation. It's not. Why did you go to college? Or why are you considering going to college? Let's be real. Was it to find a career? Was it to make your family proud? To try to make a difference in this world? Uh, Maybe to help raise up your community. Maybe because you want to make money. Maybe you weren't sure what else to do. Uh, seriously, not a trick question. Um, these are uh, valid reasons, many of which uh, exist probably for you. And if you're honest with yourself, there's more than one or they're even hard to identify. Um, oftentimes, these reasons are kind of a mix of big dreams and really kind of mundane, practical reasons. Whatever your reasons, I'm guessing it wasn't so you could learn how to die. It certainly wasn't for me in my college application process. This John passage passage shows Jesus using a metaphor of a a seed or a, a kernel of wheat. He says, unless, and this is a key, unless a kernel of wheat dies, it remains only a seed. Whoever loves their life will lose it. And whoever hates their life in this world will, will keep it for eternal life. It's not exactly typical college admissions slogan material. In this past, in this current year, 2020, 2021, how are those dreams about life after college going? This certainly has not been the year that I planned or imagined. Not even close. We had a picture of what we thought things would be like. And in general, uh, maybe you're still kind of aiming for those. But the future looks a lot murkier than it once did, doesn't it? I mean, even the idea of why am I doing this? This question might have raised in you kind of a what? Not a comfortable question in this season for many of us. We're just about a year into this pandemic. We think of the lives lost, the enormous heaviness of the world. These are not things anyone, I hope, would call good. I think of my chemotherapy experience. I do wonder if there is a kind of gift hiding in the one day at a timeness of this season. I wonder if there is a gift, if we would receive it, of being free from the illusion of our control of the future. We can't kid ourselves uh, into thinking that we are in control of what will be or even what is today. We can't kid ourselves into thinking we know what next year will bring or even next month or even tomorrow. The seed of our lives is not ours to keep. Try as we might, we can't hold on to it. And I wonder, what would it be like to think of this time not as a a prison sentence, but what if we thought of it as an invitation, a year in? That the the must of grasping after the uncontrollable could become the, the may of receiving the true good life 
from God. Yes, even in the midst of this. When we surrender our kernel of wheat, our our seed, our life, over to the one who, let's face it, already holds it in his hands anyway. In this passage later on, Jesus says, my soul is troubled. It's a human moment from Jesus. My soul is troubled. Do you find your soul troubled in these days at all? I do. I think you're in good company if you find yourself there sometimes. Uh, Did you know that after delivering this teaching, it's not in the lectionary reading, uh, but later on in the passage, we find that Jesus goes off by himself and it says literally he hid himself from them. I I will say speculating about the Bible is always a little bit risky, uh, but I wonder what he did when he went away by himself and hid himself after this moment. Uh, Did he go to pray? Maybe he went to go take a nap. Jesus' mission, be very clear, Jesus' mission was to go to the cross at this point. And yet, he really didn't take a very efficient road to get there. He kind of meandered. He, he spoke to seemingly random people. Uh, he rested when he needed to. And yet, he was obedient through it all to the call on his life. Can I just say that following the call of God does not demand machine-like efficiency. In God's mission, there is room for the seemingly inefficient. In God's mission, there is room for times of of just being alone. In God's mission, there's there's room for prayer. In God's mission, there's, I'm going to say it, there's room for naps. In God's mission, there is room for good things that that bring enjoyment. And by the way, maybe in this season, you are even finding some of those things that have brought you enjoyment in the past just are difficult or don't do it anymore. Or maybe they're not possible to actually participate in. Um, That's okay too. There's room for where you are at today. I think it's good to have this reminder especially those who are getting towards the end of the college experience. Remember, uh, there is no award for the person who graduates college with the least amount of help or support from others. Consider this your invitation to go ahead and just do it. Just send that text. You know what I'm talking about. Just send it. Send that message. Make that phone call, that email. Just go ahead and reach out for support. Why not? It may feel like you're wasting time in this season, but I'm telling you, you are making time. Jesus understood that his life was, at the end of the day, just a seed. And in this season of Lent, we remember his journey to the cross wasn't an accident. He knew it was only in his death that we all would live. I wonder, in this, in this season of life, in this age of life, uh, when you are, let's face it, often told, even now, uh, go be anything, do anything. And I mean, especially in light of this pandemic that's taught us how little truly is under our control. What would it look like to aspire to be a seed? Not a seed that lives a false life of self-preservation somewhere on a, on a shelf. But a seed that in dying to self is planted in the ground and born to a whole new kind of life. What does it mean to die to oneself in this time when it feels like there's already so much death and loss and challenge all around us? The world would tell us to fill up this void through Pursuing achievement, according to the world's standards. I feel that temptation as well. We all do. My prayer continues to be, Lord, teach me a new way in this season. Not my will, but yours be done. As a sort of maybe invitation into further contemplation and reflection on that kind of mindset of surrender, I want to invite us to, in just a moment, listen to a hymn. 
Um, one of my favorite parts of liturgical chapels um, when we have met previously together has been to invite different choirs from APU students to come and uh, lead through singing. Um, obviously something that's been difficult in this time. Um, but I'm delighted that a, a small group of members of our chamber singers choir uh, has uh, put together an audio recording of a really simple hymn called I Surrender All. You may be familiar with it. And I want to invite us in just a moment as we listen to this hymn. It's, it's a couple minutes long. Uh, there may be the temptation to zone out or do something else. I want to ask you and encourage you and invite you to, to fight that temptation. You're getting the gift of a couple of minutes of reflection on some deep and important things. Don't miss it. As you listen to this, what would it look like to open yourself up to what God might be inviting you to surrender today? So let's worship through listening just there where you are, along with this recording from our chamber singers, I Surrender All. All to Jesus I surrender all to him. And thank you to all of you who participated in that recording. Continuing in that attitude and that spirit, we come to what is often considered the pinnacle of worship in liturgical traditions, the table, communion, Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, it's often called. Um, in this meal, we participate along with the body and blood of Christ who allowed himself to be planted in the ground so that we, so that all may live. And as we transition into this, it needs to be said, COVID-19 presents all kinds of challenges, doesn't it, with this kind of practice. And so let this be a moment of, of grace and openness and possibility. Um, if you feel comfortable, if your conscience allows it, if your tradition that you're part of allows it, we invite you to take part in 
um, consuming elements where you are. If you're a student, you got an email last week inviting you to get those prepared. Go ahead and get those now. Uh, but if, for whatever reason, uh, that doesn't feel the right way for you to participate, let this be a spiritual communion, uh, or maybe even an opportunity to remember those times when you have been gathered for Eucharist and to pray and hope ahead for when we might be able to gather again. And the beauty of APU is that we are able to have space for a lot of different traditions and approaches. Um, uh, and so this is considered an open table, whether with or without elements. May this be a space where any who are interested in the grace and the new life in Jesus can participate. And so I invite you to join along with me in this liturgy of the Eucharist as we pray the great thanksgiving together. So let us pray. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Lord Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven. And let's say this together. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let's continue in prayer. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and creator of all. And so on the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he said to them, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore, we proclaim together the mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Amen. And so wherever you are, as the body of Christ, as the body of APU scattered around the world, uh, hear this invitation to a table that is big enough for all of us. So come to this sacred table, not because you must, but because you may. Come to testify not that you are righteous, but that you sincerely love our Lord Jesus Christ and desire to be his true disciples. Come not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Not because you have any claim on the grace of God, but because in your frailty and sin, you stand in constant need of his mercy and help. Come not to express an opinion, but to seek his presence and pray for his spirit. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Feet run to the broken. 
So this final benediction, this blessing, uh, is taken from our last couple of songs we've sung together. So as you go into these days ahead, day by day, may the Lord give you the grace to surrender all, so that you may receive the very heart of the one who went to the cross, giving his life for the world. Amen. Go in peace.